Well, comrades, incredible things happening in my world. If you remember, been watching my videos, you will know that I was invited by the Sheriff Court in Tayside for jury service. But due to my illness, I cannot make that. It's far too much for me, and I have hospital appointments and things to get to. So I phoned up the Sheriff Court. He told me I have to get the doctor to forward an email to them to excuse me from service. But uh, a lady from the surgery, Caroline, she phoned me just 10 minutes ago and told me I have to take in, I have to struggle across to the doctor's surgery, but that's only, I guess, for a normal person, that's just a one-minute walk. Uh, but that'll probably take me 30 minutes to get across here and the same to get back because I'll have to keep resting on my cane and sitting down wherever I could find something to sit on. Uh, so I've got to take the this letter here that you can see. I've got to take that in for some reason. And I don't know how he could email this to the, to the Sheriff Court, but I guess because I gave him the email and everything. Uh, so he wants this for some reason. So I have to do that tomorrow. But what I'm going to do, I want to keep this, so I'll ask, ask for a, uh, a photocopy. I'd like to keep this. Uh, another thing, I have been reappealing for the PIP. Michael, the guy who handles me, he's been walking me through the process. I am reappealing, but now they're telling me that I need a new fit note from my doctor because on the last fit note, that's all it's got on that is low back pain. And that is not uh, that is not all my injuries, right? the appointment with Lisa and the findings, calf deterioration, purple feet, the ultrasound, never mind the MRI scan and things, right? The state of my feet. Uh, so I have to, they want me to get the doctor to forward them a new fit note with a proper list of my injuries. So I, I, told, I told the nurse about that, uh, and she called me today, as well as the jury citation letter. She told me that uh, I have to, the, the doctor isn't going to do that, that I, I should speak to a welfare officer. So I phoned her back. I wasn't really paying attention. Maybe I didn't explain that properly. I phoned her back, right, and told her that, look, Universal Credit, they... As part of the appeal process, they want a fit note sent into them. You'd need to talk to them. So she told me that, okay, Trevor, uh, the doctor will phone you back sometime this, sometime this afternoon. And that's it. So I'm, go I'm going about to wait on the doctor, whether they've been phoning me, and we could see what that's all about. And as of yet, right, the test results from the ultrasound, they have not being forwarded to the doctor's surgery or put in my medical file or maybe they were hiding them away in the hospital file so that's what I've been doing uh, I've been uh, st still trying to get this sorted out and I still have to pay my own taxes to the hospital now Caroline she starts talking about there's other people who could help you a washing machine and things to help you get a washing machine so that's kind of, that's something else I could look into. So that's where I am. Uh, still no far, far, uh, further forward with help with taxis. I have another appointment with the hospital coming up shortly next week. That's going to cost me another £20 off my, off my uh, welfare check. So that really hurts me. Losing £20 if you're on hardship allowance is appalling. So if you compare, if you compare my first fit note, the very first fit note, that had a list of my recent injuries and problems on it. If you compare them to all the rest of the fit notes, there's nothing on that. They are saying that that led to points being de deducted from awarding me PIP. Another thing though, right, uh, they also said that because you got, I put on, I put on my liar. I tell the truth, right? Why would I lie? I'm not lying about nothing. It's easily you can see that I'm ill. Uh, they, they, they listen to this, right? This will crack you up. They, they told me that because I could put my coat on myself, right? Now I know a lot of people who are getting disability benefits. I live in a little, a little, 
a little place where I grew up. I know everybody. And they could all put their coats on. You could see plenty of disability people wandering around, right? Disabled people with coats on. They said, Trev, because you put your coat on yourself, we awarded you last points. But I told them, right, that it's not my arms, apart from my left arm, but I could still use that somewhat. Apart from my arms, it's not my arms, it's my legs, right? So these people, right, they're all over the place. They are at loggerheads with each another. I think, I think, right, the Universal Credit Riot and the doctors and the nurses and that, they're all, they all probably have to phone each other and try and sort that out. So here's hoping that something happens for me. Uh, another thing, right, before I go, uh, I could have, I stopped my last video though. I stopped my last video. Uh, I'm in enough, I'm in so much trouble, right, that I don't really want to. I guess the natural thing for me to do now, right, on my website, if you're thinking of my website and my career as a kind of lecturer on history and stuff, an amateur historian's perspective, if you think of that, right, the natural step for me to do, and I'm, I've always been political based, right, watch Prime Minister's questions and watch politics and that, but due to those things that happened to me way back in 2012, I stay off their websites now. Uh, the natural thing for me to do, right, if I'm not talking about history and stuff, the road to the New World Order, would be to keep an eye on the war, get involved in that, talk about these kind of things. I kind of enjoy doing that. But I, st I refrain from doing that, right, because I'm in so much trouble. It's bound to lead to more problems for me. So anyway, I just talk a little bit I try and keep it low-key and just talk a little bit about history. But the kinds of controversial things that I discovered through my research, my right, it always gets me in trouble with my perspective. But either way, right, the last video I made, you could see it's, you might just think it's more boring history stuff, but that's, that's very important stuff. But I just I just decided to stop the, the, the film stop the the tape after World War Two and Adolf Hitler because the file goes on and on and on and on, right? I'll end up with a two hour a two hour film, but I could I could have went on into right uh the war on terror and nine eleven and things, but I just decided to stop it there. Or even the Cold War and the Maastricht Treaty, the Shenzhen area, all these civil rights laws in 1957, many more civil rights laws were issued to non-whites. And another great thing, right, that I could have talked about was a guy called Enoch Powell, and you remember he made his Rivers of Blood speech in 1968, and he, he called them out on it, that this, is this isn't about love, it's like Malcolm X in America, he knew these guys were lying, using non-whites against us, take our jobs, speed up the claps. This is where Powell was. And the whole the whole world, right, went mad at Powell calling him a racist. But did did, did anyone did anyone believe the loony left? Did anyone believe these rich people who control your world that actually Enoch Powell is a racist and they're allowing all these immigrants into Britain cause of love, just because they're idealistic people wanting to give them, from these immigrants from the Commonwealth, a better way of life. Did anyone believe that? Of course they were lying, right? And you can see the damage they've done today. So anyway, I, I decided to stop the video, right? Because uh, you got to be careful making videos if you're an amateur, right? Uh, I've learned I'm not an amateur anymore. Uh, there's some, never mind controversial things, right? Like, was Cromwell working for the king? Wasn't he? Was Napoleon working for the ancient regime? Or wasn't he? Was Hitler controlled opposition? Or wasn't he? If you stop, even just the English Civil War and the French Revolution on their own, they are fascinating subjects. You think of the Charter in 1814. That put, that restored the monarchy after Louis the Sixteenth was killed. Louis the Eighteenth, he, he won the throne, right? France became a constitutional market. Nothing ever changed in France. These things, there's a lot of things that are very important for you to understand. Like uh, the English Civil War also started in 1642. That's a fascinating subject. Never mind was Cromwell controlled or not. Uh, people, uh, remember, that, was, that came off the back of the Reformation when England became a Protestant nation and things, or at least the ruler, Henry VIII. He became the head of the English church. 
he kicked the, the Pope, lost his position as the, the leader of the English Church. He took up that role. That's what led to that's what led to Charles I being accused of being uh, betraying the, the Reformation and things. All these things are very important, and of course, the kind of things that happened to Montrose. Why why they killed him in that? Right? If you stop, if you stop. Uh, just basic, given history shows, right, I like to just brief over it all, because if you stop for a minute into just the English Civil War, well, I could take an hour, I could easily, you could write a book on that. People have, you could write a whole book on that itself, so I just gave you uh, a brief understanding of that. I was just kind of in the mood of doing something, I think. So anyway, right, there you have it. I'm waiting on a call from my doctor and see if I can get this sorted out and possibly Caroline the nurse told me that the welfare office they wanted me they wanted me to go to the surgery to meet him but that's a struggle for me so I asked if he could come to my house right she could uh, he won't be happy with the way I live uh, they've left me with nothing uh, so if he comes across here to talk to me that'll be a good video uh, uh, an appointment with the welfare officer advisor. So stay tuned, right? Uh, and thanks for listening.